Hi, I'm Jamie from One Eskimo. Awesome. Thanks so much for making the Blip FM sessions today. Oh, it was great. It was really great fun cool, to do. Cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the first time we've done something like this, really. Um, obviously, we've we've uh, been traveling across America, doing quite a lot of uh, radio stations, uh, web uh, radio stations as well, and even internet television. But um, to have instant response that that we can kind of view straight away, and you know, not that we reacted too much, but you you can kind of uh, have a chat from. You know, people across the world. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys had well over a thousand people watching simultaneously, Great. which is pretty wild. So yeah, it's more than we get at our gig. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's a good thing to happen. So that's cool. That's cool. Well, talk, let's talk a little bit. We we did talk about some band stuff and songwriting, but uh, I really, you know, the tone. You know, your tone was really, really awesome and i think from from just a gear perspective i'd love to kind of learn a little bit about you know what your acts of destruction you know what right. kind of amps do you play through etc cetera, etc cetera. with uh, when uh well in, in my past i've of uh, i've owned kind of from 1970 i've got a 1972 jazz bass which i adore nice. yeah. um that's kind of in storage now it feels wrong to put it in storage but right um it's kind of at a stage where it needs to be looked after a little bit now, so I don't, I don't want to go take it on the road. It's too yep. precious. Yep. Um, I've got some, got some crazies as well. I've got a, a James uh, Trussard metal metal cast, or steel caster bass. Um, wow, okay. It's a metal body with holes in it and drilled through it, <laughs> and uh, I think it's called the Rustomatic one. Which uh -huh. is, I think he's like put it in the ground for about six months. The metal of the bass. Right. right. And then it's got a maple neck. And it's it's. It's not as heavy you would think. It's like a 1960s P bass kind of weight. Okay, okay. And uh, yeah, when I jam it through my uh, uh, Ampeg SVT, okay. it, it's like a charging rhino going through it. <laughs> but uh, I've recently bought something which I've I wish I'd done ages ago, um, which was because um, now I'm playing a, a Breedlove. Okay. And which is amazing, mm -hmm. and it's it changes the way you play creatively when you're on an electric four string fret, mm -hmm. fretted mm -hmm. um, you, you, you I think it's it's easy to get uh, kind of conventional and mm -hmm. kind of do what everyone else does but yep. when, when you pick up a fretless it kind of frees you up a little bit more well even just, the glissandos that you were doing I mean it just sounds so like smooth it's, it's, it's really you, cool you, you play a different you play a different way because you know you do, uh, you've got I guess you get so much more control really uh, over the exact pitching of the note, and I think there's some really nice um, harmonics mm -hmm. and overtones that you get from from uh, from a fretless bass. Um, I'm not saying that I'm going to stick to fretless bass yeah, exclusively, yeah. but at yeah. the moment I'm really enjoying playing one. Cool. And I do that in, uh, on a on a live stage. It's a bit tricky sometimes with the subs coming back and vibrating the body of the yeah. bass, so you get yeah. feedback. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, well, I didn't tell you where I bought, did I? Um, <laughs> my favorite, my favorite thing now is uh, a Universal Audio um, LA six hundred and ten Mark II, mm -hmm. which is the uh, vintage all tube uh, pre preamp. Okay. Um, and T four opto compressor, which is like the LA two A. Yep. And the bass going through that is just. Wow. Mind okay. Blowing. Okay. I'm still t I'm still haven't got the exact sound that I want on it. But I know it's possible, but I'm still kind of I've only had it quite recently, so I'm still dialing the tones into it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, no, I I had uh, I, I, the bass player for the new Master Sounds, a guy named Pete right. Shand, sitting in your chair uh, just about a week ago, and we talked about you know kind of the new school tone. You know, for basses, uh -huh. which is a lot more trebly, sort of yeah. slap oriented, you know, and the old school rounded sound, which yeah. really sounds like what you're doing. So sort of that John Paul Jones kind of, you know, yeah. very, very, you know, just deep, heavy, you know, sound, which, you know, again, I, as you I said, like a, I'd like a definite thump. Yeah. yeah. I, I, obviously, I don't want to lose the high ends. Yeah. Uh, I still want them to be there uh, just because that, that's what's nice in a fretless bass, yeah. you know, the, the kind of. Uh, Upper mid range that did that sometimes, or the, that's where all the harmonics lie mm -hmm. in the overtones. So I don't want to lose them, but I think the fundamental thing that should be there in a bass uh, is bass frequencies. Um, and it, I think, when you have to st structure the band and the sound of the band, if you do that with the bass and have a lot of treble and mm -hmm. a kind of clicky bass sound, yeah, um, it, everything else has to change. Um, but I think that the, the, the clicky bass sound tone has come come along from how, either having 
really heavy low lows from the guitar mm -hmm. and having a massive kick drum so the bass has to fit in some way sure. by being clicky sure so sure. i guess it's horses and courses it's, it's, it's whatever whatever style of music you're playing but at the moment i love a real thick solid bass tone that just kind of uh connects well with the kick drum yep um which I think that the set that I got at the moment is is what I, what, what I like. Absolutely, absolutely no. I mean, you know, for for a band your size, you know, that connection with the kick drum I think is is absolutely critical to form the foundation yeah. of the band. Yeah, so definitely. you do a great job, and it really sounds like you guys. I want to say how long how long have you guys been playing together now? Me and Adam have been playing together for about six or seven years. Yeah. Um, yeah. As a rhythm section. So the band's been about four or five. I'm yeah, four or five. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. We started uh, kind of. The pre-production of stuff went about five five years ago, four years ago we were mm. a band that was kind of trying to trying to tour at least. Yeah. Um, the logistics of that is very difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where was that? Where was that going? <laughs> well, it's all good. It's all good. But hey, well, anyway, I know you guys uh, got a pretty busy schedule tonight. Um, thanks so much for making the sessions. It's yeah, really, really really an honor to have you guys, and hope to see you tonight at the. Great American Music yeah, Hall, and, yeah. and looking uh, forward to play it. I hear that it's uh, it's it's quite a place. It's a it's real, real cool venue. Yeah. In any event, thanks again for making the Blip FM sessions. Hope to see you soon. Loved it. All thanks, right,